bit of a new angle, eh? Taking a new angle on things. <clears throat> I gotta go to work soon. I'm gonna ride my bike over there because there's a big festival today uh, called Sunset Junction. And it's like sunset, and they block off a large chunk of it. And I work on sunset, and traffic's going to be fucking nuts. So I'm going to ride my bike. It'll be good to ride my bike anyway. Um, been a little on edge lately. A little self-conscious. I made three other videos. The first two, I was like, not, I was baked. <laughs> and I, it was like, we need to build large farm structures in the sky with glass pillars and huge glass structures that will farm, farming systems that can feed people. I still think that's a good idea. Arcologies is what, what the, they're hypo theoretically called. People have been talking about them for like 100 years. I think it'd be great if we could build a large farming structure, elevated, like above the desert or something. <clears throat> we can. It's easier to build new ecosystems than it is to reform this ecosystem. So that could be beneficial. I made a video about that. I made a video to somebody who was talking about being afraid of smoking weed. And I said, uh, I think, or that he, it made him paranoid. And I said, I think it makes people paranoid because it's, Ill, you know, it's federally, they make it illegal or they, they don't like it. So you're, you're all worried about it and you, you, you're freaking out because you can't be honest about it. You can't talk about it. So that's why people get self-conscious, not because the drug itself doesn't, it just does what it does. It doesn't make people self-conscious by nature. It's the inability to talk about it. Come on, people. That is so obvious to me. Weed does not make people paranoid. The government makes people paranoid by telling them that they're going to throw them in jail for eating or ingesting something. It's actually, I don't think it's illegal to ingest it. I think it's illegal to ingest it in public or to drive after ingesting it or inhaling it or whatever you do, taking it in. Possession itself. It's too hardcore. It's got to change. The laws, they just ebb and flow. You know, it's one thing when everybody's worried about paper in the hemp industry. It's got to be shut down so that the paper industry can take off, but that was 100 years ago or 80 or whatever it was. Now we have electronic communication. The paper industry is not as important as it was when newspapers were the, uh, the, the number one form of, of uh, mass media. So yeah, legalize hemp. Make it legal again. We can use it for a lot of stuff. We can use it for clothing and for fuel, for biofuel. People can smoke it if they want on their free time, not smoke it and go to work and do heavy lifting, not smoke it and drive with it. Make it like alcohol. Don't do it in public. But good God, take it easy. Lord knows we can use it. Lord. Lord. God. People know we can use it in this society where it's like nine to five, work, 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 work so hard gain a bunch of weight, eat a bunch of fast food, make a bunch of money, get diabetes, uh, develop cancer at age 45. Like, this is our society. This is what happens to people when they're pushed, when they push themselves and they don't take a time to sit back and think about why. <clears throat> it's really important to think about why. Think about why you are what you are, why you're doing what you're doing. Why? There's a reason for the motivation. Money's not the reason. There's a reason why we've created the money system. I like it because you can take money with you and you can travel around and still have your stuff. But there's a reason why There's a reason why we chase money beyond just getting enough to eat and to have a, a roof and some running water and electricity and all that stuff, internet. There's no need to chase the money, but there's a reason why people chase the money. Ask yourself why if you've been doing it. 
okay, that's what my last two videos were wrapped in a nutshell. Then the third, the other, the third video I did was all choppy, so I didn't post it. And I've been kind of nervous about posting videos. I feel like I, I inundated people with video. Like I made like 12 videos in like five days. It's fucking crazy, man. I got a letter from Mark asking me, does love exist? And I want to read that and give my thoughts on that. Mark said, this is the letter. Hey, Ian, this is something I've been pondering a lot lately. I just can't work it out. I wish I could record a video to explain my thoughts, but I lost my webcam and my digital camera will only record 60 seconds of video, which just isn't enough! Exclamation point. Anyway, what I can't work out is if there's really a difference between love and just liking someone a lot, or between love and just a high degree of care for someone, at what point does the feeling become significant enough for them to be distinguished? Does love have a special power that affects a person in a way that the other lesser emotions mentioned don't, like caring for someone and liking someone a lot? Uh, thank you, Mark, for your question. I think that love is not an emotional experience, necessarily. I think sometimes people call it love, but it's kind of a bastardization of the word. <clears throat> Liking someone a lot and caring for someone a lot are like emotional responses of the animal wanting to be comforted. But love is truth. I see it as truth. Love is, is when you're honest with, what, with yourself, with other people around you, then you are spreading love to other people and it's completely irresistible. If you, if you show love, people will always respond to it. Sometimes people are afraid of it, <clears throat> excuse me, and will back away from it for a moment. But if you continue to offer love and don't, don't be shut off by their initial reaction, they'll come back and listen and, and love, love in return, be honest. And that's it, I, I think, love is truth. To be honest with yourself is so important. And to be honest with yourself, with other people around, is true respect, self-respect, love. We can do it. And to do it with a video camera on and then put it up on the internet is pretty cool. Because you love yourself in the moment. Like, there's no one around me right now. Just this camera recording. But then it's going to be up and it will be perceived that I am here with you. And then I see the response of giving the same thing and I feel it and it affects me through these great distances that we've that we've shrunk into literally in my living room when I have somebody's video running it's it's in my room with me you are here with me love is very important but it's not about what you do it's how you are and being honest is the, the step Kind of train yourself to be honest, and then you'll just start doing it naturally. Uh, I hope that answered your question a little bit, Mark. I hope that clarified some things. All right, guys. I'll see you.